Hello and welcome to this C++ Developer Skill Sprint on Regular Expressions and T-Regex. My name is Al Manorino and I'm one of the Embarcadero Software Consultants. This Skill Sprint will cover using regular expressions with the T-Regex record for handling regular expressions. Now the purpose of these Skill Sprints are to give you about a 20 minute session that focuses on a new skill that you can use immediately and to get answers to your questions in a live questions and answers session at the end of the skill sprint. Now this blog notes link you see on the bottom of this slide will give you the replay of the session including links for sample projects used in this skill sprint. This skill sprint on regular expressions with the T-Regex works with Rad Studio 10 Seattle and the App Method Summer 2015 release supported platforms using both Object Pascal and C++ in both VCL and FireMonkey apps. This skill sprint will use C++ Builder and C++ examples. And two days ago on Tuesday, December 8th, I presented the Delphi developer skill sprint on the same topic and use Object Pascal examples. Now T-RegX works with console applications, VCL and FireMonkey multi-device apps. So you can use T-RegX on Windows, Mac OS X, Android and iOS. For this skill sprint, I'll quickly define what are regular expressions and what can you do with them. We'll look at the T-RegX record for handling regular expressions and we'll see that T-RegX calls the t Perl regex functions that interface with the open source Perl compatible regular expressions library. And if we look at the website for PCRE, we see that the PCRE library is a set of functions that implement regular expression pattern matching using the same syntax and semantics as Perl 5. And we'll look at some example apps on how to use regular expressions with the T-RegX record. And then we'll have time at the end for any live questions and answers. So what are regular expressions? Well, regular expressions are an extremely powerful tool for manipulating text and data. They are now standard features in a wide range of languages and popular tools, including Object Pascal with Delphi and C++ with C++ Builder. So basically, a regular expression is a pattern describing a certain amount of text. Regular expressions are search strings where certain characters, symbols, have a special meaning. So with regular expressions, you can do text processing and with the general pattern notation, almost like a mini programming language, allows you to describe and parse text. So for example, this slide shows a few regular expression patterns. This first pattern describes a series of letters, digits, dots, underscores, percent signs, and hyphens, followed by an at sign, followed by another series of letters, digits, hyphens, and finally followed by a single dot with two or more letters. So this pattern describes an email address. And you can use this regular expression to validate user input for a valid email address, assuming that this is what defines a valid email address. For this second regex example, can anybody guess what it is and what can it be used for? Well, it could be used to validate if an integer was correctly inputted by the user. And the last example comes from the Rad Studio Refine utility if you used it for migrating BDE DB Express or any DAC applications to FireDAC. The Refine utility uses the Perl compatible regular expressions for search and replacement patterns to migrate BDE, DB Express, or any DAC apps to FireDAC. So we don't have the time in the short skill sprint to cover how to create regular expressions, but there are many books and free internet tutorials on how to create regular expressions, like these regular expression books uh, we see on this slide. Next, let's look at what is T-RegEx and how do you use it with regular expressions. T-RegEx is a record for handling regular expressions. Using regular expressions with C++ Builder and this T-RegEx record, you can add, remove, isolate, validate, and manipulate all kinds of text and data. Now T-RegEx is in this system.regularexpressions unit. Now C++ Builder has had built-in support for regular expressions since the XE version. 
And in most cases, you're going to use this regular expressions unit. So this unit defines a set of records that mimic the regular expression classes. They allow you to use a regular expression in just one line of code without explicit memory management. So now let's go into C++ Builder and look at how to use this regular expressions unit with regular expressions. Here I'm using C++ Builder 10 Seattle subscription update 1. Now I mentioned TregX works for VCL, FireMonkey, and console apps. So here is a C++ Builder VCL Forms application that I rapidly coded to show how we're going to use TregX, isMatch, and replace methods. To use TregX, we add include uh, system.regularExpressionsUnit. Now for any new code written in C++ Builder, it's best to use this regular expressions unit that is part of C++ Builder rather than one of the many third party units that might be available. Looking at the regular expressions unit, we see that tregx is defined as a record rather than a class. In addition to tregx, this regular expressions unit also defines tmatch and tmatch collection, tgroup and T group collection all as records rather than classes. So having T reg X defined as a record rather than a class means that you don't need to call create and free to allocate and deallocate memory. So that's very cool. T reg X does have a create constructor that you can call if you want to use the same regular expression more than once. That way T reg X doesn't compile the same regex twice. So if you call the constructor, you can then call any of the non-static methods that do not take the regular expression as a parameter. If you don't call the constructor, you can only call the static class methods that take the regular expression as a parameter. All tregex methods have static and non-static overloads. Which ones? you use just depends on whether you want to make more than one call to tregx using the same regular expression. So let me switch to my code only view and then we'll take a look at all of these tregx methods. The first static overload method is isMatch. The isMatch method takes in an input string and compares it to a regular expression pattern and if it matches it returns true indicating the regular expression matches the string. So for example, we can use this method isMatch to validate user input. So if we want to validate if the user entered a valid date in a certain format, like month, day, year format, we can create a regular expression to match a specific date format. So if the input date matches the regular expression, the method returns true. So now let's see how we can use this isMatch method in the C++ Builder VCL app that I already have opened. A popular use of regular expressions is to validate the user's input. So for example, did the user enter a valid date or a valid email address or a valid IP address? Now programmers would need to write their own error checking functions for user input validation since there is no uniform syntax for checking the correctness of the user input. But now using C++ Builder and the regular expressions and tregx, now it's possible to check in a simple and effective way if the input is what you expect from the user. So this app is going to check if the user entered in a valid date in month, day, year format between these two dates. So we have a T edit box for the user's input. And then when we click on this validate date button, we see in its event handler that we have a regular expression pattern to check if input is a valid date in month day year format between these two dates. And then we can call the isMatch method of tregx and we can compare our input date with the regex pattern and the isMatch returns true or false indicating whether the regular expression matches the string. So let's run this app and see what it does run the app. So let's put a valid date in the tedit box like December 10, 2015. Now when I click on the validate date 
button. This calls the isMatch method of tregx, and it returns that this is a valid date since the input matches the regx. So now for the date, let me change it from month 12 to month 13, and let's click on the validate date. This time it comes back that date does not match the regular expression, so that works fine. Uh, now let me put the date month back to 12 and let me make the year uh, 3015 and let's validate that date. So this also comes back with date does not match the regular expression. So all of this is working great. Let's go back into the regular expressions unit and look at the other methods for tregx. Looking at the static overload match method, we see that it takes an input string and compares it to a regular expression pattern and it returns a tmatch record with the details of the first match. If the match fails, it returns a tmatch record with the success property set to nil. The non-static overload of match takes an optional starting position and an optional length parameter that you can use to search through only part of the input string. The matches method takes an input string, compares it to a regular expression pattern, and returns a tmatch collection. So looking at tmatch collection, the default item array property of this record holds a tmatch for each match the regular expression found in the string. If there are no matches, then the count property of the returned tmatch collection record is zero. Next method to look at is this static overload replace method. And we'll see how we can use this replace method in that same C++ Builder VCL app that we've been using. You use this replace method to search and replace all matches in a string. It takes an input string and it compares it to a regular expression looking for that pattern in the input string. And if it finds it, you can replace it with another string. Or instead of passing the replacement string as a string, you can pass a tmatch evaluator, which is nothing more than a method that takes one parameter called match of type tmatch and returns a string. Let's now see how to use this tregx replace method to search and replace text. For this example, we're going to have an input string of numbers and words like we see here, and we want to split the input string into numbers and words. So we want to remove all of the words and only display numbers, and we want to remove all of the numbers and only display words. To do this, we're going to use two regular expressions. So we have this regular expression that should match any real number, and we have a second regular expression that should match any word. And then we, rec and then we have a replacement string that's just going to be an empty string. So we want to search the text input and we want to split the string into numbers and words. And we're going to do this with the replace method of tregx. For clean numbers, we're going to take our input string and we're going to match it with our regular expression numbers pattern. And any numbers that it finds will get replaced with the replacement string, which is an empty string. So this will clean out all of the numbers from the string and only leave the words. And we're going to do the same for clean words. So we're going to take the same input string. We're going to compare it with regular expression words pattern, looking for words. And any words that it finds gets replaced with our replacement string. That's an empty string. So we're going to clean out all of the numbers and just have words and we're going to clean out all of the words and just have numbers and then we're going to output just the numbers and output just the words so let's run the app and see what it does our input string has both words and numbers so when I click on our split the input string into numbers and words button it's going to call the replace method of tregx it takes the input string and it removes all of the words and replaces them with the empty string replacement string. And it does the same for removing the numbers and only keeping the words. So this replacement method of tregx works just fine. So now let's go back into this regular expression unit and look at the last method. Looking at the static overload split method, 
we see that we can use the split method to split a string along its reg x matches and the result is returned as a dynamic array of strings. So the text that's matched by capturing groups in the regular expression are also included in the returned array. The non-static overload of split takes an optional count parameter to indicate the maximum number of elements that the returned array may have. So in other words, the string is split at most count minus one times. Capturing group matches are not included in the count. So if your regular expression has capturing groups, the returned array may have more than count elements. And if you pass count, you can pass a second optional parameter to indicate the position in the string at which to start splitting. The part of the string before the starting position is returned unsplit in the first element of the returned array. So that was a quick overview of the tregx methods. There are three more items I wish to mention about this regular expressions unit. The first item is internally the regular expressions unit uses the regular expressions core unit. So looking at this regular expressions core unit, we see that it defines the t Perl reg x class. And the t Perl reg x class is a wrapper around the open source PCRE library. So both the regular expressions and the regular expressions core units use the PCRE reg x flavor. So now let's go look at a few more regex sample applications using tregx. This is a regex VCL sample app. Uh, it allows the user to test the validity of a string with regard to a regular expression. So this app is also going to use the isMatch method of tregx. So let me run this app and explain what it does. Run the app. So this app contains a list box, a memo box, an edit box for user input, and a button to evaluate if the user input matches the regular expression. So from the list box, a user can choose to either validate an email address, an IP address, uh, dates in two different formats, integers, real numbers, and, and words. So when one of these options is selected from the list box, the regular expression that's going to be used for the validation is displayed in this tmemo component. So next the user can enter an input string into the tedit box and click the evaluate button to see whether the input is valid according to the regular expression. So let's try this app with a few sample inputs. So let's try email first. Let me enter in my email address and if I click evaluate it validates it against this regular expression and it comes back that yes the text does match the regular expression so that worked okay. If I remove the at sign between my name and Embarcadero and I say evaluate this time it comes back with you know the text does not match the regular expression so that's working fine. Uh, if I place my at sign back in the email address but I remove my dot com and evaluate it once again comes back with text does not match the regular expression so this regular expression to match a valid email address appears to be working okay. Next let's try to validate an IP address so this email address for sure should not validate this IP address based on this regular expression but let me try it anyway. Click evaluate says nope this is not a valid IP address. Uh, let me replace this with a valid e IP address like 192.168.1.5 and evaluate that. Uh, this time it does come back with the text does match the regular expression so that works fine. And let me just try to change this last digit to 256 and see if that evaluates okay. So it comes back as expected. Uh, this IP address does not match the regular expression so uh, the IP address checking appears to be working fine also. And let's just do one more date using this regular expression to check to see if I input a valid date in the format of month, day, and year. So once again with this IP address it should not match that date 
regular expression pattern and as we see it does not so let me replace this with a valid date so today is uh, December 10th 2015 that should be a valid date evaluate and that comes back yes this uh, is a valid date because it does match the regular expression so that's fine and once again we're checking dates in month day year format between these two dates so if I was to change this year to 3015 uh, it should not match the regular expression so when I say evaluate uh, correct uh, the text does not match the regular expression so uh, all of these regular expression patterns to match these different types of inputs uh, all appear to be working okay let's look at one more last fire monkey regular expression application I mentioned earlier that T regex works the same on console VCL and fire monkey multi device apps so here's an example using fire monkey so now this app is similar to the VCL app we just saw, but since this is a Fire Monkey application, we can add special shadow effects to the input edit box to show if the edit box input value is valid or not. So we can make the shadow effect be green for valid input or red for invalid input. And we can do all of this in real time without the need to click an evaluation button. To the edit component, we added a shadow effect component and we set the shadow color property to be red by default. So for a Fire Monkey app, the T edit component has an event called on change tracking. So looking at the event, here is where we can, in real time, as we're entering our input, we can continuously validate the input against our regular expression and change the shadow effect from red to green once we get valid input. So that's really cool. So for example, when you input an invalid email address on Windows, Mac, iOS, and or Android, you'll get a red glow effect in real time until you have valid input, then the valid email address glows green. So that's really cool. So let's quickly see this app running on multiple devices. Now since this is a Fire Monkey multi-device app, we can build and deploy this on Windows 32-bit, Windows 64-bit, Android, iOS, and Mac OS X. So let's first run it on Windows and see what it does. Testing email with a valid email, we see our edit box has the green shadow effect telling us we have a valid email. If I remove the at sign from the email, in real time, the edit box glows red, telling us the input is invalid. So that works great. Let's pick one more platform to build and deploy. So I'll pick my Mac OS X desktop. Let me build and deploy this to my Mac OS X desktop. So it's building now, and here it gets deployed. So here's the app running on my Mac OS X desktop. And once again, we see with a valid email address, we get the nice green shadow effect on our edit box telling us that we have a valid email. But if I remove the at sign from the email, once again, we see in real time that now we have a red shadow effect around the edit box telling us the input is invalid. And if I put the at sign back in, in real time, once again, we get that nice green shadow effect around the edit box telling us the input is valid. So all of this works great. So it works on Windows, Mac OS X, iOS, and Android, all from the same code base. So that's really cool. This ends what I had time to cover on this skill sprint on using regular expressions with TregX. For additional resources on using regular expressions with TregX, look at these doc wiki links on TregX and TPerlRegX. This Rad Studio regular expression classes link has additional details on the regular expressions unit and the TregX record. This link on PCRE, Perl compatible regular expressions, has the documentation on PCRE. For Perl 5 regular expression syntax, read the Perl regular expressions main page. 
and then look at these two regular expression samples, VCL and FireMonkey, that you can download from SourceForge. And lastly, go to this blog notes link, embt.co slash sprint dash regular dash expressions to get the replay of the session and additional information, including links for other sample projects used in this skill sprint. For the next time, next week's developer skill sprint on Tuesday, the 15th of December, will cover understanding and using FireMonkey layouts using Object Pascal and doing the same on Thursday, the 17th of December using C++. So at these understanding and using FireMonkey layout skill sprint, Jim McKeat will show us how to maximize the different layouts in FireMonkey for a flexible user interface. So that sounds very interesting and I'll be attending those sessions myself. And you can see the full schedule and replays at embt.co slash sprints 15. For special offers, let me quickly turn the session over to Jim McKeat from Developer Relations to let you know what are the current Rad Studio, Delphi, and C++ Builder special offers for this month of December. Then I'll come back for any live questions that you might have. These offers are only available for a limited time. All registered users of previous versions qualify for upgrade pricing when upgrading to Rad Studio, Delphi, or C++ Builder 10 Seattle. That's a savings of up to 45% off the new user price. Additionally, all 10 Seattle registered users get the bonus pack, which includes the MITA Converter Basic. It handles the heavy lifting when converting your existing VCL applications into FireMonkey applications, so you can take advantage of the FireMonkey framework and multi-device development. And the Premium Style Pack. This includes premium styles for VCL and FireMonkey to give your applications a premium look and feel on every platform. Also, as a special limited offer, if you buy or upgrade to Professional, Enterprise, or Ultimate, you get the Konopka Signature VCL Controls and CodeSight Studio 5 for free. This collection of components and debugging tools will rocket your apps to new heights. And if you upgrade to Architect, you get the entire RAD Solution Pack for free. This gives you every component and tool you need to make your application great. For more information on these offers and more, visit Embarcadero.com slash rad offer. Thank you, Jim, for letting us know all those great special offers. This ends this C developer skill sprint on using regular expressions with TregX. So you saw how regular expressions are an extremely powerful tool for manipulating text and data, and how easy it is to use TregX with regular expressions. So thank you all for attending. Now let's open up this session for live questions and answers. Well, the first question is, is it working in FMX as well? And Al said, absolutely. Uh, you can use the regular expressions. They're in the system unit, which means they work across VCL and FireMonkey and across Windows, OS 10, iOS, and Android. So there's another question here about, it says that looking at some of the examples there, they're using a slash character for any uh, essentially in the literals. So the way regular expressions work is you can think of each character as like a programming word, an identifier, and so some of those characters have a specific meaning like the slash and the dot and the plus. Uh, if you go to that uh, link right there in the middle, it says the um, regular www.regular-expressions.info, regular there's a ton of good reference information there that you can use to uh, understand regular expressions better. But there's a list that you can find on that site that lists all the characters that have specific identifier means or meanings. And any of those characters, if you want to use those to match a literal in your string, then you have to use the uh, slash, the forward slash, to indicate that you're escaping that character to mean a, become a literal. So when you Go to, go to the website, the regular expressions.info, and when you see that list of, of characters that have special meanings, then you can recognize that those, what those characters mean, and other characters are used as literals. And like I said, if you want to make a plus from a one that 
from a uh, or the dot. So the dot, for example, means match anything. If you want to make the dots instead, I want to match a dot specifically, like in a uh, IP address, for example. And you put a four slash for four, and then it goes to the dot from being a special meaning into being specifically a period. And uh, so yeah, that, that that's the purpose of the four slash in the regular expressions. And it says can use regular expressions. In place of a mask, um, I don't know how to mask off input because the regular expression takes a string after the fact, right? So, right. So you can compare, right? If you want to, if you have a mask to compare input, that's kind of what regular expressions does. Uh, but, uh, but uh, yeah, maybe maybe a little bit more uh, clarification on on what you're trying to do, and then maybe we can uh, give you a a better answer, yes or no, if, if T regex can be used in place of a mask. You could, so you could, um, depending on which event, you you could basically put an event on, it would seem, and then have that event check what they just added to the string in there, in there and if it doesn't match the regular expression, you could say, oh, and prevent them from doing that. There's an event on edit box where you can evaluate the string before it gets um, added to the edit box, I believe, but I can't recall what it is offhand. But yeah, you, sh you should be able to do that. It, again, it, like it, Al said, it depends exactly on what you're trying to accomplish, but uh, yeah, as far as you, know, you want to be able to to see if what the user's typed in matches what you're expecting as far as formatting, whether it's numbers or some sort of format like Al showed with the uh, IP addresses or dates or email addresses, then yeah, you can use a regular expression for that. And Jim, I think you had a question. It does work on Android and iOS with FireMonkey apps or console apps or anything you want to do to validate uh, data coming from a database or whatever. And you can apply rules on email addresses, for example, and so on. Yes, it, yes, it's a, it's really regular expressions. It, like I said, it's, it's almost like a whole new programming language. But then once you kind of understand some of the basics. There's lots of other people out there, since because it's based on the PCRE, that you can just take advantage of other people's have created regular expressions or uh, change some of the existing regular expressions out there. And uh, yeah, one one thing that the uh, usually when people start talking about regular expressions, somebody will say, "Well, can I use regular expressions to validate HTML?" And apparently, there's a great deal of debate about whether you can do that or not. But the current school of thought is that HTML is too complex to be validated by a regular expression because there's too many nuances of what can be a valid tag and the way tags can be arranged. Uh, you'll see people that try to do validate HTML with a regular expression, but the current school of thought is that you really, it just doesn't cover every possible permutation. There's still still a very powerful way to, to validate things and with the T-Reg, it apparently works across all, all platforms, so that's great. Now, do you have to link anything else in, or does the regular expression unit bring in all the code that you need for your executables? Nope, n nothing else that is needed. So that, that standalone T regex class is, uh, is all you need. Just add the uh, regular expressions unit, and you're uh, you're good to go. The if I remember, if I call correctly, and I think I'll mention this is that when you first pass the string into it, it actually compiles the string into the the regular expression. So there's a little bit of overhead when you first put the string in to convert that string into a regular from the human readable portion of the regular expression where the, the string you type in becomes something behind the scenes that is used to do the pattern matching. And so if you're wanting to match the same use the same pattern over and over and over again then like I'll show you want to use the constructor on the T regex in order to do that once when you construct the T regex record and then it will do the matching over and over and over again but because if you like have a loop and you're going to go through 100 items you don't want to recreate that regex each time so do that first ahead of time because there's a little bit of overhead very small amount right. when it goes to convert that into a regular expression that's right. In addition to that question on overhead, uh, I found out if you're doing you know, many, many, many of these regex pattern matches. So in situations where performance is really critical, 
instead of using uh, Q regex, go directly to the T Perl regex and use it directly. Once again, if, if performance is really critical for you. That's that's one of the things I've always loved about uh, Delphi is that you can you have know, all these different levels and things you can deal with it at, right? It's like, oh, it's easy level here, or you can dive down all the way down to the metal and win those rare cases. You, you need to get squeeze that of performance flexibility out. So Ralph's asking if you can pass a delegate to is match to validate certain parts of the input, like check some functions and stuff like that, things that would be supported by regular expressions in general. Something I have not tried myself, but worthwhile. I'll uh, I'll take that as a homework assignment to try it out myself, and I'll uh, I'll post it in the uh, in the blog notes link uh, my results. I know you can. I haven't tried it either, but I know you can get a a collection of matches back, and then you could go through each match and deal with that match specifically. So I'm not, I don't think you could do it with a delegate, but you could go through the collection of matches when you're done, I would think. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to see how that comes out for you. <laughs> Ralph says he's curious to find out how it comes out. Too. I know that uh, my experience has been that usually I start trying to deal with text parsing and I'm, you know, using like the string replace function or some other stuff like that, positions and Usually, if you find yourself doing that, that's when you need to start looking at T-regex. If you're doing lots of position of this string and this string and getting complicated, that's a good time to use regex. Just look to see if it matches and, and replace parts of strings and stuff like that. So Yusuf's asking kind of a specific question here about regular expression. I'm not sure if I completely understand it. I think it's something you do with regular expression, but I'm not sure if I... He wants an, an example. I'm not sure if... It, if it's a mask he's using there, or what he's trying to accomplish? So ba basically, if, if you can define a regex pattern for what you're looking for, uh, then yes, our our is match or match uh, method of a T regex will uh, will work using it. So if that's the question you're asking, then uh, then yes, the, the answer is yes, they can do it. Yeah, as Al mentioned, there's there's no way we could cover everything you can do with regular expressions in a skill sprint session. Those three books he listed probably still don't cover everything that you can do with regular expressions. And there's a lot of a uh, that uh, regular dash expressions dot info site has a lot of good information on it, and then as well as some of the PCRE expression documents and such. Yeah, and I put that regular expression classes link. It's in the chat window, so you just click on it. So. Uh, yeah. So yes, we so we do use the uh, so it's Perl five. So the regular expression that T regex uses is based on Perl five's regular expression syntax and semantics. So that's what you want to look at for any type of regex expressions you want to use to use with the T regex class or record. The question was, can you define different patterns in one string? Or do you have to have separate strings for different patterns? You can't have multiple patterns in the same string. That's correct. So, yes, uh, there, was, there were many. I only got to uh, so of the of the methods. I pretty much only showed the, uh, the static overloaded method. But you'll see there are many other non-static uh, methods to use. It's quite possible one of those can do what you're asking for. So Ralph says your homework is to create a pattern that also covers February the 30th uh, and leap years, of course. Sweet. I am sure. I'm sure somebody has already come up with this regex pattern, so I'll, uh, I will do that and I'll uh, I'll post it to the uh, blog notes link. Yeah, there it, there are tons and tons of examples of regular expressions out there. It's very rare. Whenever I need a regular expression, I usually Google it. Say, who's got a regular expression for? Finding this, if someone's already found the pattern to deal with those common scenarios like that. So, yeah, if, 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 re, if recall one of my early opening slides, I had that short version of, of what a regex to check for a valid email address, or so very short regex expression. Uh, but then, when you looked at the examples that I showed, it was something ten times as more complicated because you know e email address has become much more complicated, right? You want to check for uppercase, lowercase characters. Sometimes you can only have uh, you can have email addresses without 
you know, any any dots at the end. So it really comes down to if if the regex you're creating is, is truly uh, what you want it to do, and it's exactly the email address you're looking for, or the IP address, or the date time format, then yes, it's going to do what it does. But if there's some other exception to it, then you need to modify that regex to have it check for exactly what you're looking for. I was going to say that if you're using regular expressions, that you really want to consider also doing unit tests on that so that you can validate that the regular expression is doing what you expect it to do because it's kind of a uh, complicated expression language and it's not always intuitively obvious to the reader what exactly is going on. But if you do some, regular, some uh, unit tests on that, some tests on the regular expression, that you can go and look and say, okay, yep, yeah, it's behaving the way I expect it to behave then you know that your regular expression is working correct. So yeah, definitely, if you're using regular expressions, have a good suite of unit tests for it. That's right, and there are some good free uh, regex expression uh, editors that let you test the regex just to make sure they're valid. So that's something to look at. So just check the internet for some uh, regex, they call them regex editors, where you can put in your regular expression and it'll validate for you to tell you if it's valid or not. And then you can give it some sample input and check if it's working correctly for you. Yep. That regular-expressions.info site has a regex buddy you can get off there, which I've used before in the past. And if I recall correctly, it's written in Delphi. It's probably one of the better ones out there, in my opinion. Yes, I agree. And not just because it's written in Delphi. <laughs> uh, here's a question here. If there's a regular expression for validating IP addresses, I think that was one of the examples you showed was uh, validating IP addresses with regular expressions, right? It, that's correct. So that's a that's a very good question. So so yes. So that that IP address I use in the example, uh, I believe it's supposed to check for any valid IP address. So now with these regular expressions, it really comes down to you know that regular expression you create. You know, does it do exactly what you want it to do? Because there's there may be some exception out there, let's say for an IP address or an email address, that the regular expression is not going to match. So if you recall that uh, one of those first opening slides where I showed that uh, quick example of an email address, it was a very short string showing an email address. And then if you looked at the actual example I showed, it was like a regular expression about five times the length that checked for more possibilities. So that's always a uh, a, a concern or a consideration when you're using these regular expressions. So whatever you create, you know, does it really actually match what you want it to do? But um, these regular expressions have been around for a long time, so uh, most likely whatever type of uh, reg regex pattern you're looking for, it's quite possible that someone has already created and you can go find it and uh, reuse it. Yeah, the, that great, that's the great thing about regular expressions is, like you said, there's tons of examples already out there. And I, I would suggest, I mean, you should always be have a unit test to make sure your code's behaving correctly. But with unit tests especially, you want to have a number of tests that make sure that it is validating exactly the way you expect it to. Because it, it, at least to me, maybe some people are really good at reading regular expressions and knowing what to do, but you kind of they're not always intuitively obvious what's going to go on there from that regular expression. So lots of tests are a good idea. And uh, in addition to those tests, there are several free uh, regex editors where you can test your regular expressions before using them. So you, you just drop your regular expressions in the editor. It'll validate them for you. Uh, you can run some sample tests against it just to make sure it's doing exactly what you want it to do. So there's a question here if there's a repository of regular expressions out there that one could use that are ready to use. And I just looked here and there's a found one called regex library here that appears to be a library of regular expressions. Uh, there's probably other ones out there, but uh, if not, just Google <laughs> what you're looking for and you probably can find it. Yes, I, I would agree. <laughs> Uh, like I said, these regexes have been around for quite a while. So, like like Jim said, I, uh, an internet search on what you're looking for will will, will probably find you uh, many many samples on on regex, and there's many tutorials on on how to create these regexes yourself. And uh, Jens is uh, listing. Yes. Oh, I'm getting an echo. Okay, uh, Jens is listing uh, reg 
exr.com as one of a, a way to do testing. It's a, a testing site where you can put in regular expressions and see what happens. Excellent. Yeah, there's lots of good resources out there. Uh, Yen's also asking, it says, uh, believes that the regular expressions were updated in XC6 that PCRE includes. And he was kind of worried that it would break some of the regular expressions, but he didn't find any. And so he's curious if he should be scared of the future or if we sh shouldn't have to worry about it. Okay, so uh, so so for us in this T-Reg class, really, there's really three parts, right? So you need to know the regular expression, and then we have our T-Reg X record, and that's using uh, the open source PCRE library. So it still goes back to using the open source PCRE library, and that's what we're that's what we're matching up against. Yeah, we tend to make a really big effort to make sure that it's backwards compatible with our update. So I would say don't fear the future, just keep on coding. Is it possible to use regular expressions to add a mask to a string, for example, inserting dots and dashes on the string in specific positions? Uh, so, so for that, uh, by a mask, so you can do uh, with that replace uh, method, uh, you could search for, so if you have a regular expression that searches your string looking for uh, you know, dots and dashes, then you can replace it with whatever other uh, string you want to replace it with. So that appears to be what you want to do. So I kind of showed that with that, uh, you have a string of words and, and numbers or integers, so I want to search that string looking for any integers, replace it with some other string, and search that string for any words, replace it with another string. So as long as you could come up with a, a regex pattern that finds what you're looking for, uh, then you can replace it with anything else you want. That, so that appears to be what you want to do. If, yeah, yeah, exactly, if you want to replace it. Now, if he's, I think he's said one to insert. So if he wants to insert a dot at a certain location, I don't think you could do that with a regular expression. Maybe you could, but probably what he wants to do is instead use a regular expression to validate that the string is is in the format he's expecting it to be and does have what he's expecting to see, and then just insert it with the regular um String handling. Okay, I, just okay, wanted, I think that's. Oh, I just wanted to mention that the uh, the blog post. I've taken the links from <clears throat> from Al's uh, final slide, and those are on the blog post. And there's a question here: If you do really complex regex, is there any speed problems? Al. All right. So great, great question. So in in general, really no. Uh, Really, no overhead. But I've seen uh, if you if you're worried about any uh, performance overheads, then instead of using the uh, T Reg X record, uh, then you can go directly to the T Perl Reg X directly. So I've seen so for customers or for applications where performance is critical, then for sure use the T Perl Reg X directly instead of using T Reg X, and that should eliminate any uh, any performance issues. The, and also, you mentioned that you can um, use the constructor to uh, parse your pattern ahead of time. And so, if you're, like, for example, in a loop, you want to only provide the pattern as a text once because it actually inside compiles it essentially into the regular expression, uh, builds it in memory. So, you want to provide the string just once and then it will compile it internally. But once it's done that, it should be fairly fast. Probably. For the most part, regular expressions probably going to be faster than the alter most of the alternatives out there. For most of the, most situations, I'd expect. So, yeah, it may be some overhead in a really complex regular expressions, but it's probably better than trying to do it some other way. Okay, well, that's all the questions. Thank you, Al. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, everyone, for joining us, and we'll uh, we'll see you again next time. All right. Thank you all for coming. So hopefully, like like I saw, it's great to use this T regex. Very simple to use and very powerful for doing data and string manipulation. And it's like I said, it's been inside of since XE. So go ahead and use it. And uh, like I said, the best use I see for it is validating user input. A really nice way to make sure user input is coming in correct, among other 
great uses of, uh, of T regex and regular expressions. So once again, thank you all for attending, and uh, have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Bye.